Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cuts and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen, and spilled the coins of the money changers, and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, Take this out of here, and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples record the words of scripture, Zealed for your house will consume me. At this the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for forty-six years and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate this feast of the building of the Lateran Basilica of St. John Lateran, which is the Cathedral of Rome. The Cathedral of Rome is not as many may think the Vatican, but it is St. John Lateran. The whole church remembers today the foundations laid on the apostles, in particular on St. Peter and St. Paul. But it is also a good day to meditate on the consecration of our bodies as a temple of the Holy Spirit and on the mission that the temples of stone, the churches, have to have. How do we have to consecrate our body to God? St. Paul says it, first of all, purity. It is a permanent struggle. Perhaps for some it will be more difficult, for others it will be less difficult. But I do not think there is anyone, married, single, who does not find it difficult. And nevertheless, this struggle is worth the effort without getting discouraged. Even if we fall down, we start again. We struggle for purity. The struggle to live chastity well, according to the state of each one. It is not the same, of course, for the consecrated person as for the one who is married. But we all have a vocation to chastity, according to the circumstances of the state in which the Lord has wanted to put us. To work intensely in a time like this, where everything is sexualized, where an erotic image appears to sell you anything, to work for purity is an obligation. Something that we have to take very seriously so that we do not allow ourselves to be dragged down by these temptations that the world offers us. The other way to take care of our soul, our body, is to make an effort to avoid pride, because pride is what distances us from God, and pride makes us consider ourselves so important that we feel superior to others. Our house has to be dedicated to God, and not dedicated to ourselves. If we consider that our life is as its starting point and end point ourselves, we have excluded God from our lives. Our house, our body, and our soul are, by baptism, consecrated to God, as baptized, consecrated to God. We have to do it taking good care making every effort to keep ourselves pure, each one according to his state, I repeat, and also trying to fight not to fall into the sin of pride that expels God from our soul. But it is also a day to meditate on the function of the temples. That was unnecessary in other era. However, today more and more churches have become multifunctional halls, we find ourselves sometimes even with beautiful temples. Sometimes we even find beautiful temples, even very old cathedrals, spectacular as architecture or as works of art that contain, which are dedicated to place. 
which are sometimes even dedicated to circus performances. I am not saying that in the temple and there are the acts that were celebrated autos sacramentales that were celebrated especially in the Spanish Golden Age in the 19th century. I am not saying that something of a religious nature cannot be done, but we must not forget that the temple is for prayer and therefore in the temple, in the church, has to be in a place of prayer. Unfortunately, in many churches, they have removed the tabernacle. They have hidden it in a room within the structure of the church, sometimes even outside the church itself, with the excuse that people make a lot of noise and prevent those who want to pray from doing so. What we have to do is not to throw the Lord out of his house, but to educate people so that they do not make that noise and so that they can be in the house of God praying to the God who is the owner of the house. My house, the Lord says, is the house of prayer. We must never forget that. The house of God is a place where God reigns. If we remove Jesus from his house, if we sacralize the temple by turning it into a public square, where people go in and out, where sometimes I have seen it even in the Vatican, where sometimes they eat chips inside the church because it has become a museum where everybody goes in. That desacralization is going to make the rest of our life lose the sense of the sacred. So today that we celebrate the consecration of a church, the dedication of a church, let us think about these three things. My temple, which is my house, which is my body and my soul, must be consecrated to God. Let us strive to work to be pure, starting again if we fall, and let us strive to fight against pride, which is the great sin against God, because we put ourselves in its place, and at the same time, the house of God, the church that is dedicated to the Lord. Let it be a house of prayer. I am not saying that we have to call attention to those who talk, to those who run, sometimes even in those who shout, because it is possible that we may even find ourselves attacked, as so often happens. But at least, on our part, let us make every effort to be in the house of God as we should be, with respect, in the presence of the Lord. Does it occur to anyone to go to a theater or a concert or an opera and start talking, telling jokes, getting up, shouting, running, children running on the stage or in the aisles. It does not occur to anyone. It is much more important what is celebrated in a church than what is celebrated in a theater, no matter how outstanding the opera or the performance. Let us give God the place he has a right to find in our body and also in our church. Amen.